creators and makers, this is a random engineer. Today we're going to continue with our sheet metal uh, tutorial series doing the form tools. So basically a form tool is um, a tool you use to give a certain shape to your sheet metal designs. Um, just to give you a little example of this, I'm going to create a uh, one meter by one meter sheet metal part and then just extrude it and see that yeah so um, good thing about sheet metal forming tools is that you can put them in your design library and by default you have some uh, inside SOLIDWORKS already so as you see you can have different shapes in your sheet metal design so in this case we're gonna double click on the emboss and just say we want a dimple as you see, you just drag and drop. Uh, I'm gonna explain this later. And you end up with this shape. So it's basically some uh, a tool that you would put in your punch in, in your turret. And basically you end up having that shape. So it's basically just a deforming of the sheet metal part. And you can go ahead and do different shapes. These shapes are defined by another tool that I'll show you how to do it right now. And basically, you have different shapes that you can do, like thread forms, bridge forms, laps, lens forms, um, louvers, ribs, etc. So as you see, you have different shapes that you can put in your in your design library. So right now I'm going to show you how to do these form tools and for that you just open a new part and design the shape that you want to do. So in this case I'm going to create a just like something like a dimple. For that I'm just going to create a say oh yeah Obviously, your sheet metal part is usually from, mm, from 0.5 to, let's say, 3, 4 mil tops, depending on the, the, the turret that you have. So you have to be careful about the, these dimensions here. Um, let's just say we want 2 mil here. And let's change this accordingly. There you go. So in this case, I'm going to make a revolution and we're gonna end up with this shape. It's a cone. So now you just go to Sheet Metal, go Forming Tool, and just select um, the stopping face and the faces to remove. So in this case, um, I'm gonna say the stopping face is gonna be this one, and I don't want to remove any faces. Let's go like that and oh yeah I forgot to put the insertion point insertion insertion point is just a point where it's gonna be located so I'm gonna create a sketch for that before the form tool feature and just gonna create a little sketch here and just put it right in the middle now I go back to the form tool and select that point go it's all good now so now you just save it as you see you have a different different colors these are yellow is going to be the the shape green is going to be the stopping face and red is going to be the i think it's the faces to remove but since we don't have any red that means we don't we are not going to remove any faces so let's just save it as a form tool and as you see automatically it, it it just directs us to our design library and let's say form tool one oops uh, form tool there you go let's save it as form tool one now we can get out of here and again go to our sheet metal part let's make it again let's say 100 by 100 and just get out of here 
and save that. So as you see, it's 1.2 right now. And if we go again into our forming tools library, um, I'm just gonna update this and it should be showing my, there you go, design library. I've, ha I've got now my form tool one. I'm gonna click on here. And as you see, we have a form tool feature. Now it gives you a preview of the shape that you just created. And as you see, you just select the, 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 uh, the placement face. In this case, it's gonna be this one. You can flip the tool. And so it punches from the bottom or the, or the top, rotate it. In this case, it doesn't make any difference if we do. And if you had configurations for the tool, you could have it here. Uh, if you link to the form tool, that means if you change the original part, this one will change automatically as well. If you unlink it, that means that um, no matter how you change the, the original part, this will remain the same. And uh, flat pattern visibility, that's, uh, oh, I'm gonna probably gonna show you better. So in this case, you can define where you wanna put the tool and just, you can just say whatever, as you see, you can change these dimensions and don't worry about this. Um, since this is the only sketch that we created, this is the one that we have to worry about. And after that, just go check. And as you see now, it has deformed the material in a way that um, gives us the shape. And let's just check the original shape. And as you see, let's just measure this. So it's two mil here. And if we measure from this point, um, let me just, I don't know if I'm able to click on that point. There you go. So if you measure dy, that's gonna be two mil. But from here to here, it's going to be um, 3.22. And that's because it's deforming using the K factor. So in this case, it has deformed um, 2 mil plus 1.2, that's 3.2. But since the K factor is taken into account, you get a different number here. So I'll just show you what happens when you flip the tool. Obviously, it will deform it from the other side. And now we're gonna do configurations. So I haven't gone over the configurations um, tool yet, but I'm gonna create a couple of configurations just here so you guys see what, um, what we can do with them. And for this, we're gonna just right click the sketch. And yeah, we're gonna right click this measure here and say configure dimension and double click this one too. So as you see, we've got a modify configuration. That means that we can change these values over here and it's gonna save it under a name. That's and between, so it's gonna be the same part name, but it's gonna be a like FT1 point new name. So let's say um, four, three, um, two, 1.5, one, 0 0.5. So as you see, I'm just creating different numbers here. This can be letters as well, so it don't, don't have to be numbers. Um, I'm just gonna say FT, FT4. So you can see that we can have names there. 1.5, 1, and 0.5. And for these ones, we are gonna say 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 1. I'm just gonna save this table so I can access it in the future and click apply and okay. And now if we, have, if we come here in our configuration manager, you'll find all the configurations that you've created plus the default one. The default one is the first um, configuration that was ever created. And if you don't create any other configurations, that's gonna be the only one. So let's say FT4, double click. And as you see, 
uh, all the all the configurations change uh, different dimensions. So we said um, I'm going right to right click here and say show table. And in point five, we said D two it's point five and D one it's one. So let's check. We're gonna click on this, and as you see, it's now D two is point five and D one is one. And if you don't know if it's D1 or D2, you can click on the on the on the dimension, and you will see here the name value of the of the dimension. Or you can also change that if you wanted to. But now that we've done, we've done that, I'm gonna save it, close it, and now I'm gonna again just put it in here. And in this case, I'm gonna select the 0.5 and go, okay, I'm not going to position it because it doesn't matter for now. And let's see what's the orientation for it. Yeah, so look here. And as you see now, it's a new configuration. And you can change this by going to the edit feature and changing a new configuration. It's going to tell you the profile sketch will be recreated and existing relations, if any, will be removed. That's only if you use the positioning. Let's say don't show again and say OK. And as you see now it changes and it's all good now. So that's how forming tools work. So now I'm going to create a new, a new, yeah, let's say a new form tool using the uh, open face. So in this case, let's create something a little bit more complicated. Just a little bit. Um, let's say 10. And say, let's see here. Um, four. I'm going to make this for construction. Then just make a spline just so we get fancy and curvy. And then just come over here. Oops, there you go. Go from there to there. And you don't have to do this, it's just, I'm, I'm just doing it for myself. So I'm just doing that now. So from there to there, you can select a, since this is a construction geometry, a uh, construction line, sorry, you can click on here, click on that, and you have the radius or the diameter. So in this case, let's go three. Um, height is the same. And let's say the inner, the inner diameter from there to there is eight. I'm just gonna leave, leave this so I can make it a little bit longer. Let's say nine. And just put more relationships here. I don't care about this one. Though. So right now I'm just gonna say revolve base and we have that shape. So it's a little bit more complicated. Obviously, there's something you wouldn't be able to do in a form in, in a so form tool. It's just a matter of showing what I'm trying in the, the form into a feature. So the stopping face is gonna be this one, and the faces to remove will be this one. Say OK and save it as a library, sorry, form tool. And I'm going to say FT2. FT2, there you go. Get out of here. Go here, update. And we have here FT2. So now, um, say okay, and there was some stick there. Let me check what it is. Oh, yeah, sorry, I made a mistake here. I'm just gonna delete this for a little bit so I can edit it. Yeah, I forgot about something. Um, so this doesn't make sense just because you're gonna um, you're gonna deform this face and you're gonna deform this face 
but this is going, going to be opened so that means that this face doesn't have any any material or anything to hold into so that's why it's not uh, being created so let me just try something first I'm gonna say please to remove this one and now we should we should have only one face I'm saving it going back to the other shape and update and let's try it one more time ah, still not breaking so you see, this is the other thing then. Um, I try to close this. Here we go. I'm gonna do it like this. And now it's gonna be a closed face. Oh yeah. I need to close this too. There you go. And now we have that shape. So save it, go back to the other side, update the library, drag, drop, and okay. And as you see, we finally got it. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a rookie mistake I did just there. Um, like I said, I was trying to deform a, a shape that didn't have any material in the inside. So obviously, if you punch that, the inside will be um, will just fall and since SolidWorks is going to try to calculate a deformation in a part that doesn't have any material so that's why it's, it was giving me a, a, a warning there, an, an error. So that's something you have to take into account while designing form tools obviously and as you see it's got the shape that we just created from the inside. So if you want to go fancier, you can go. You can make thread forms and stuff like that. And yeah, I think that's it for the for the forming tools. Um, if you have any questions about it, just let me know. I will gladly um, answer them for you. And as you see, it's a a very good way to make. Uh, some new shapes in from from your forming tools and your um, and your turret tools. So just have to be careful about what you're trying to do. And as you see, we can have different shapes. Uh, just to show you how this forming tool is uh, configured. As you see, this is the stopping face. These are the deformation faces, and this is the open face. So that's why it's doing it. Yeah. And there you go. That's gonna be it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, comment, like, subscribe, share, and all the good stuff. See you guys next time. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like it and share it. Subscribe and follow me on social media to know when I'm live. And if you want to support this channel, click on the Patreon button. See you in the next design.